And the risks that are posed now by the storm have been highlighted by a meteorologist on American television who choked back tears as he observed how the storm had intensified. Take a look. It has dropped 50 millibars in 10 hours. Um, I apologize. This is just horrific. Well, listening to that clip with me is Julia Seeger, our science editor. Julia, look, it is rare to see a meteorologist, an expert, sort of so publicly distressed like that. Just spell out for us why it is he's so concerned now. Well, you have to understand that he's commenting live the evolution of Milton. This was yesterday, so hence the... The, um, the storm was located on the northern coast of uh, the Yucatan region next to cities like Merida that are quite poor mm. uh, with winds uh, exceeding 240 kilometers per hour. Uh, and uh, fortunately then right after this, the storm actually tilted a little bit and hence the damage was not as, uh, as bad as what we expected. But also you have to understand just a few hours before that, he experienced the rapid intensification of the storm in the Gulf of Mexico. And this is the third time we've seen such a rapid pace of intensification of a hurricane in the Atlantic Basin ever. Um, now, the reason why is because in uh, the Gulf of Mexico, the surface water is actually very warm. And this is where hurricanes actually get their uh, their strength and their intensity. What happens is that the sun is going to hit the water, the water is going to evaporate and mm -hmm. rise. And when it encounters colder air, then it condenses, it creates somewhat of a, of a cloud that starts spiraling. And then you see, of course, uh, appearing the eye of the storm, as we call it. And so it's directly linked to the fact that the oceans are getting warmer and warmer, hence also the fact that he's so distraught. Now, since then, the hurricane has taken a northeastern turn towards Florida. It's set to make landfall uh, as of tonight uh, in uh, the Tampa Bay area, very close to uh, exactly where Helen hit just 12 days ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and and it has been fluctuating between a Hurricane 4 and Hurricane Category 5, uh, but it is set to weaken. That's usually what happens when a hurricane makes landfall. So it's set to weaken uh, once it hits landfall, but uh, mainland. But uh, it is taken very seriously. People are evacuating, which doesn't happen that often. People are very used in that region, are very used to hurricanes. They tend to stay at home. Mm -hmm. And this time around, we're really seeing people uh, wanting to get out. If you look at St. Petersburg, they've issued a mandatory evacuation of zone A, B, and C. These are coastal areas. And this is actually rare. We haven't seen this since Irma. So we're expecting, uh, indeed, flooding, significant flooding, and also the fact, as you saw in the report, that most of the debris that's still there from uh, Hurricane Helen is going to be uh, you know, transformed into projectiles. OK, so significant dangers then from this hurricane, Julia. More broadly, do we know, are there ways to try and mitigate the dangers of hurricanes? Well, actually, scientists have long searched for a way to at least attenuate or even prevent the formation of hurricanes, or at least to try to change their track. Uh, it started after World War II with the Project Cyrus that was financed by GE, but also uh, the U.S. Army. And what they did is that they projected dry ice straight into the hurricane, thinking that it was going to modify the cloud envelope and change the structure uh, of, of the hurricane. And they did... Uh, you know, observe somewhat, somewhat of the some changes in the appearance of the hurricane, but they couldn't establish a very strong uh, causal effect. Mm -hmm. So then there was another project that was a little bit more known called the Storm Fury Project. It lasted for 20 years. It was funded by the U.S. government. And here they did what we call cloud seeding. So here they dumped what we call silver iodide. So these are, are, are salt crystals, and once again thinking that it would modify the structure, increase the condensation, and, and change uh, the hurricane from within. And they used it on several uh, hurricanes in the 60s, Esther, Bola, Debbie, Ginger. At first, the, uh, the, the results were encouraging, but then they stopped once again because there wasn't a strong causal effect. They couldn't say that the, these silver crystals were really the reason why the, the hurricane had changed trajectory or intensity. And there's another idea as well, Julia. This was a really, really rather creepy one. And this is dropping an atomic bomb to blow out, in inverted commas, a newly formed hurricane. Tell us about this. Well, exactly. Thank God they didn't use it, of course. Uh, this would have produced radioactive fallout in a big way and, of course, environmental issues, but they did consider it. Mm. Uh, now, there was another method that was theorized and that was as crazy, but the, the, it was to uh, fly supersonic planes in, inside the eye of the hurricane. And the idea was that uh, from the energy that was deployed from uh, the passage of the sound barrier, it would once again modify the structure, but that only stayed as a theory. So those were all of the methods to try to change the structure of the hurricane. And, of course, another method was 
to try to cool the surface waters because, as I said, this is where the hurricane is getting all of its intensity. And here in 2009, um, Intellectual Ventures, which is a U.S. company, proposed to place gigantic funnels in the ocean to divert the currents of warm water. And uh, this was a good idea, but it actually only stayed as a modeling stage. So what's interesting is that all of these projects that I've detailed here were actually abandoned. And one of the reasons why is that they were able to change somewhat of the structure and the, you know, the path and the intensity of those hurricanes, but they couldn't deal with the consequences of those changes. So they could change the path, but then they couldn't say where it would go. Mm -hmm. um, and so they, they started being we wary of creating what they called a Frankenstorm, so a modified storm for which they wouldn't be able to deal with the consequences. And here it's really, once again, if you tweak nature, uh, you, you can unleash unexpected consequences. Julia Seeger, our science editor, thank you very much indeed.